I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Hello and welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James. I get the honor of introducing you to extraordinary women that inspire me, women that are change makers, and they have stepped out of the ordinary into the extraordinary because they really have a deep desire to be in high service. I believe that women are emerging on the planet, that we are here changing lives, one person, one community, one neighborhood, one nation at a time. And so my guest today is someone that is near and dear to my heart. Um, She is a friend, but I also lean into her amazing advice. Her name is Karen Russo. She's the award-winning author of The Money Keys. And with her unusual blend of experience as an MBA from Columbia University, a top-selling salesperson, an accomplished corporate leadership trainer, and an ordained interfaith minister, Karen shares from her 25 years of success in builds business and personal growth. Her work has been endorsed by many, including Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith of Super Soul Sunday and Sharon Lecter, who selected Karen to contribute to a chapter to Think and Grow Rich. She is also one of the amazing leaders and instructors in the Academy of Women Emerging, uh, which is my organization. Karen, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, Cynthia, thank you so much. It really is an honor to be here. And I, I just love this vibration of acknowledging what women are up to and then collectively always asking, how can we do it better? How can we support each other more? What's next? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I love that you're a money expert because I'm just going to speak personally and then I'll speak for my client base. You know, what I find for women is that money is a hard issue to face, to deal with, to to explore, um, to to ask for what we're worth. Mm. So, you know, first of all, Tell us a little bit about where you came from, because I'm sure you didn't, you weren't born on the planet as an, uh, a money expert. <laughs> no, no. You know, and I have, um, you know, often people will come with like a real, like I was lost and now I'm found and it's huge. And mine was a little bit like the, the parameters were a little closer, but the, um, the consciousness of where I'm from and where I am was, a bit, was big. And I think a lot of people will recognize it. So I came up on the East coast of the United States. I was born by uh, my dad is a first generation Italian American. My mom grew up in the Bronx. She is the uh, daughter of an Irish nurse and a Jewish school teacher. And she became a teacher and her sister is a nurse. So it's just kind of this, like at the time, you know, it's just, we were middle-class in our upbringing and the positive of it was this ethic of like, If I was told as a kid, your job is school. And I loved my job. You know, I loved, so I was a very serious little girl. I loved school. And there was an ethic of if you work hard, um, life could be fair and money was part of it. Now, we could do hours about, you know, privilege and systems and other things that are involved there. But just like from a kind of a personal capacity, I was set up to be able to function in a world where work, money, fairness, I had that foundation. And so that was good for me, Cynthia, to have that as like, that's the kind of like the grounded place that I come from. But then as I was coming up and, you know, I have an MBA and very much value education. I got, was working for a bank in New York city. I was also having to face my alcoholism and, all the other stuff that went with that and surrendering to coming into recovery. And that's where I started to keep things separate. So my, you know, vulnerability and emotion and recovery was over here and my work hard, make some money, be functional over here, separate. And I think it's the, the pain of keeping those separate and how it's like my work felt a little empty and my spirituality was disconnected from my life and finally bringing them together about 15 years ago or so when the money keys came out, 
I, I needed to bring it together for me. And then that's the, the message that I'm really bringing to women everywhere. And I think, I think that, that thing about um, letting our whole life be included, I think that's a theme for a lot of women. Yeah. Well, what I love about your story is, is that, is that, you know, it wasn't just some picture perfect thing that just, you know, exploded into greatness, you know, that, that you had things to overcome, that you had things to face, that you had an incredible work ethic and, and education, but the bringing your life into a holistic place was the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And so that makes you a great teacher. <laughs> well, and we always teach too what we need to learn. So, you know, what am I working with now? How to evolve from I can have what I want if I work hard and struggle into let me be of maximum service and enjoy the circulation at a high level. Oh, I love that. Because I come from the same background. It's like you have to work hard. You have to struggle. Life is hard, you know, and 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 it, it was a really interesting thing within me because it was like it's like my spiritual teaching is saying there's ease, there's grace, there's flow. And my mindset is like work, 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 work. Right. So what do you think was the um, the switch for you? that said, I can do this differently and I can show other people how to do this? You know, I think this, the switch happened for me, it was more incremental than getting sober was a moment of clarity. I can't do this without help. Like I had that kind of experience. But the bringing the worlds together began in small ways. So I... I was working for a bank and it was, although I was competent, I wasn't that successful and I wanted to express myself more. And so I ended up getting a sales job for a training and consulting firm. And what I started to do there, because I was going to my meetings, is I started to bring some of the vulnerability and the humor and the being more real with people who are my clients. And this was 25 years ago when, you know, women wore blue suits, white blouses, and those red ties that kind of flopped. (laughs) But I would be a little bit more real and talk to my clients in a more, um, a more, just a more humble and authentic way. And it felt, it was working. And then in my recovery meetings, I stopped hiding the fact that I was, that I had like a competent life and I was able to support myself because it was sort of like a, in some of those things, it was like a badge of honor to be on the edge. So incremental, share a little bit more of what's really happening and see how helpful it is to each other. And then, and you'll remember this, the point that really got me was where there was that time when everybody was going to these wealth building workshops and it was like, uh, you got a millionaire mind, I'm going to you know, break the board and we're going <laughs> to do tax liens and real estate. And it was mindset and it was tactics, but what was missing was like surrender and a higher something. And then at the spiritual centers where you and I have come up and, you know, I was studying to be a prayer counselor and then even into ministry, a lot about abundance consciousness, but not a lot of tactics. And so what I saw was, what would it be like if we could bring it together? Mm -hmm. And that question, like, started them really coming together. And the other thing I'll, I'll say for a lot of women is benchmark or model yourself because there's already for so many women there's an area of their life like friendship or romantic love or how they are with their body or food where they've had struggles but they've overcome and then they're able to learn and change and grow and if you can do it there you can do it with your money i i love that well and i really want to take a little deeper dive into money because i remember when i went to um when I became a solo entrepreneur, you know, and I went to a leadership program and the first thing they said, is like, okay, we need to look at your money, you know, you know, bring us your finances, your, your, your profit and loss statements. And I freaked out because I sort of was like loosey goosey with money. As long as I had money to do what I needed to do, it was great, but really tracking it and understanding Mm -hmm. it, it was when they said, this is what you have to do my insecurities rose to a level that was shocking to me. 
Hmm. So I really want to talk about the, 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 um, the thing that can come over us yeah. that stops us from wanting to be clear about our money and what the benefits are of really getting clear. Yes. You know, so much of it is, and the, the phrase I've been using lately, and we use this with our Academy of Women Emerging, is money leadership, which is not the same as you need to become an accountant or an auditor, um, but it's just like if you care about the health of your body and your food, you might not grow the vegetables, but you know what you're eating. It's it's there's a level of engagement that's really positive, and people just have different uh, different styles of thinking and leading and learning. So it, you know it's not going to be the same for everybody, but I would say any area where there's been growth or something positive, it's always good to be um, clear about what you want. You know you've got that goal, and then honest about where you are. And it's the honest about where you are that it's good to work with a business coach or in a community or a mastermind where you can come and say, I made 60 or 600,000 or 6 million last year. And I took home, you know, 40, 400 or 4 million, whatever, you know, like whatever your numbers are to be able to be in a place where you can be honest. And, it, and I just think it's so powerful, isn't it? It's like, we can't change something if we can't name it. That's exactly right. It, it's ex- exactly right. I, I I think really getting clear about where I was strong mm-hmm. and where I, I needed to uh, shore it up became a game changer for me with my finances. Yeah. The other thing I, I really want you to talk about is I, you know, I've heard you speak so many times and I love that you're, you're teaching in, in our academy, but you really talk about the fact that there's a masculine and a feminine mm. energy to money. Can yeah. we talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's this is the thing that's so um, it's really kind of fresh for a lot, especially for a lot of women. And I do think that women's financial evolution is a little bit behind where we are as uh, contemporary women with other topics. So it wasn't that long ago that a magazine that I deeply respected by a woman that I deeply respect. So I won't tell you what it is, but it rhymes with Chopra. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So um, a magazine I really respect was doing like the best of 2014 or 17 or whatever it was. And the tips around um, holistic health were cutting edge and the tips around, um, you know, how do you configure your family life were cutting edge, but the money tips were things like, you know, it, what it was so old fashioned and, you know, it's kind of like, um, be a little bit afraid, um, save a lot, don't spend too much, you know, it just was too small. So I, this is where I think women are poised to really expand, especially if we understand that money, like everything in life has creative energy and mm-hmm. all people across gender expression and across orientation have access to masculine creative energy and feminine creative energy. With money, masculine energy is clarity, decision, action, the ability to say no. It's a single focus. And when when women are missing that masculine, Cynthia, what happens is, is they'll be like a frantic overwhelm and a lack of clarity. But when women have masculine energy, they're able to make decisions to say yes, to say no, to be clear, to choose. And it's really powerful. And then the feminine is really important with money. The feminine with money is receptivity. It's uh, the capacity to have, to appreciate things, to be aware of what we do have. And without it, women will feel empty and exhausted around whatever they're doing to either make or manage money. But with it, there's satisfaction. And for many women, it's really powerful to understand my feminine ability to appreciate what I do have, that makes me stronger in being able to experience more. And my masculine ability to choose and to act makes me even more productive and effective. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, 
that was that was such a, an aha moment for me when I heard you talk about that. And so that I can I can have a, a specific time where I really deal with my money, my bills, my whatever, you know, from the masculine point of view, and then from the feminine, be grateful and stand in the awareness of of, of yeah. all that I am being given. I mean, it 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 it, it creates a holistic way of being. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think, you know, I want, I just want to talk about worth, you know, uh, I saw this judge Judy interview and then she had been told, she really was like one of the highest paid people on television, which I didn't know. And, and they said that she also, you know, um, they couldn't understand, you know, how did she get there that she was so high, highly paid. And she said, I asked. Yeah. She said, I went into the meeting and I said, my, my ratings are higher than anybody else. And she said, and she had a list and she said, I deserve this. And when, she, and when I was listening to the interview, I thought, you know, that is something that I've had to really work at to ask for my worth, to, yes. to charge for my value. And so can we just talk a little bit about that for women? Cause I think it's something really important. It's, it's so important. And there's a, a classic observation that often Men are paid for and compensated and valued for their potential. And women are paid for and compensated and valued for like the hard evidence of what they've already done. So without getting too political is just choose the political leaders that you would like to evaluate and run that through your mind. It's, it's pretty common for um, in a field to, to look at a, a guy and have kind of a like, he could be great. And to look at a woman and think, what's she done? And all of us have some version of that. So, and we have it internalized, right? So the, the, I've got a little bit of a counterintuitive way for some women to break that is, is to ironically, of course, you want to value yourself for the precious and beautiful woman that you are, for the life experiences you have that have given you the wisdom you have today. And women are really good at being aware of their impact on others. So this is the piece where it's like, if someone is to go to a emotional integration coaching session with Cynthia James, what's going to change in their life? What kind of value are they going to get? What's going to be different? And when they, when that client has the breakthrough of no longer being burdened by an old family story, how much more effective will they be in their work, in their business, in their relationships? And what, what does that mean um, in terms of a measurable? So it's a little ironic, but for some women, start with realizing that when you come into a room or a family or a client engagement or at your job, that you make a difference and that difference is valued. And sometimes when you understand the impact you make, that will help to get the confidence up to say, I deserve to be paid for that. Yeah. It's so incredible. I, I remember I was working with my coach and um, she told me that my, um, my um, fees were too low and I had all these reasons why I couldn't, I couldn't raise them. And she said, well, let's talk about your education. Let's talk about the books you've written. Let's talk about the places you, she just started naming off all these things. She said, now tell me why your fee can't be higher. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I mean, it's, it's really getting clear about the value that you give, you yeah. know? And, um, and I love that you teach that. And I love that, that you inspire people to go just a little bit deeper into understanding how they are in service to others. Yes. Yes. You know, there's a thing, there's a difference too, between um, like we find our value and our worth. Everyone knows the the general idea that the way you look at money is what comes in that's called income or revenue or salary or, you know, um, the receipts, what comes in. And then there's what goes out, expense, spending, investment, like it goes out. And typically to grow in wealth one of the basic places to start is that you live within your means, meaning that your life and household uh, requirements are covered by what comes in. And then um, 
the what goes out for life and household, then you have more that's left over that could go into investments for savings or if you have a business, you're investing back in the business. And I just want to make the comment that for most people, the place to put our attention is not so much on the reducing expenses. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's like if you wanted to have a healthy body, just counting calories, like it, right? It just, you can only do that for so long and it's not inspiring and it feels so meager and it just has your attention on something that's so small. Whereas if you think about it, I mean, every woman who's listening to this will be able to give a lecture on Mm -hmm. the importance of the vitality and the metabolism and, you know, the whole system and the consciousness. And so that's the other piece I think it's so important is like, let your consciousness lead the possibility of the greater inflow and the streamlined, excellent stewardship and outflow rather than budgets, skimping, saving. Yes. Oh my gosh. I hope y'all wrote that down because that (laughs) is really important. So, so before I ask you the last question, I want you to tell people how they can find you, how they can work with you or join one of your groups. Yeah. So the best place to go is themoneykeys.com, T-H-E-M-O-N-E-Y-K-E-Y-S.com. And there you'll see the, some wonderful complimentary downloads. I've got a new thing coming out called the Lead Your Money Kit. And you'll also see ways to use my audios and videos and readings and tools in a variety of self-study ways. So themoneykeys.com is the best place to go. Awesome. So the last question I ask is the same for every guest. This show is called Women Awakening. What do you think is the one thing that is the most important that women should know about awakening? Hmm. That it is always possible and that it's essential, essential for our own soul and spirit and essential for the whole. And, And I really do believe there are challenges in our world that only the awakened woman and awakened women, like we must be in that place to be able to lead and contribute in a world that I love what Marianne says, a world that needs us at our best. I love that. Karen Russo, thank you so much, not just for being on the show, but for being on this planet and being willing to share and open the hearts and minds of of people to be conscious with their money and with and value themselves. I so appreciate it. Thank you. So ladies, we do this once a week. You get to come and meet new, fabulous, inspiring women, you know, that are just like you, you know, they, they are dreamers, they are creators, they are expressives. And the only difference may be that they've stepped into that place of their own inner power and their own inner purpose. So please come back, meet them. You know, we're on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Apple, Amazon, YouTube. Subscribe um, and you'll get notifications every week of what's happening. I'm really grateful uh, to be with you. And I want to leave you with this thought. You are a dynamic expression. You are extraordinary. You are unrepeatable. You're a unique expression here to do great things and to shine your light in the only way that you can. No one else can do it that way. And so whatever your dream is, whatever your desire is, I invite you to wake up, open your heart and step into your greatness. I'll see you next week. 